we think about beheading as a judicial punishment, we think about the famous French guillotine or the guillotine as it's properly pronounced. But before the guillotine, there was beheading by sword and also beheading by axe. It might surprise a lot of you to know that there were countries on the planet, particularly Germany and Austria, that were using beheading by axe as an official method of capital punishment right up into the 1890s. This particular axe here is one of those axes. This is a German execution axe. This was found by me in Berlin and its dynasty connects it to an executioner family that worked throughout Berlin in the 1800s and the surrounding areas. I mean, you've got this cutting edge and it's quite wide. The executioner is not going to miss. He lets this thing drop down by gravity, expending as little energy as possible and the working surface is such that you are definitely going to sever the head. A little bit this way, a little bit that way, you're still gonna hit it with the edge that counts. And on this ax, it's got the name engraved of the maker, which is right here, it's Grossman in Berlin, and it's got a massive weight to it and a really short handle. This isn't something where the executioner would be winding up and taking a vicious downward swing with. He let probably the blade do a lot of that swinging for him. Raise it above his head and down it comes. Now the condemned for this sort of an execution, they would have to put their neck on a block. Can you imagine that? You're not really willing to do that. You don't want that to happen, but your hands are bound behind you, you're hustled up by guards, and they wouldn't just have a beheading block. In this picture, which is in a German wax museum at the end of the 1800s, we see mannequins reenacting a beheading using an ax just like this. You can see the condemned is tied face down, their neck is on a solid wooden block, and their body is lying prone on a table face downwards. Their hands are in front of them and have been removed. They would have been brought out of the prison with their hands tied behind them. They're brought forward around the front of the execution block with long cords and ropes. Two of the executioner's assistants might hold these to hold the arms firmly in front of the body to the block. Then the executioner is raising up the axe. Not very high, you can tell by the picture. I mean, it's, he's not swinging like you're cutting a cord of wood. He's raising it just high enough to give it momentum to come down and do the job. And it's really creepy. I mean... German executioners at this point in time, this part of history, they didn't look that fearsome. They looked dignified. Here we see a newspaper report about an execution done with an ax just like this in the 1890s. And we're seeing the executioner, he's wearing a frock coat, a tuxedo for all intents and purposes, and a top hat. This was the way that the German executioners, known as the Scharfrichters, came to be known. I mean, show up in a top hat, coat and tails, looking very dignified. But that, that sort of poise belied their occupation. These guys had to be efficient. And this was the tool of the trade. This particular axe, it's believed to have beheaded over 300 people before Germany instituted the guillotine. There's no mistaking what this was for. Not cutting down trees or stumps, but for cutting off human heads.